It's a beautiful day here at the end of October and it's the eve of the Celtic New Year, which is November the 1st. And that's why in, in Ireland and other Celtic areas, we call it Samhain and Mina, Mina Sauna is November. It's an ancient Celtic part of the Celtic calendar and it's to do with the collection of the harvest and, and so on. And it's a lovely time for, and that's where Halloween comes from originally. Uh, it wasn't a scary thing at all. It was just a, a spiritual thing, a pagan ritual and a time of the year. And November the 1st was the Celtic New Year. So it's it's Iha uh, Hauna and it's uh, the end of the summer really. And uh, it's the, the eve of Samhain and the start of the Celtic New Year. And it's also the eve of the COP26 summit the most much publicized uh, global leader event on uh, in Glasgow and there's been a lot of hype and a lot of build up to that and more than build up there's possibly a lot of negativity associated with it as well and this whole grappling with climate catastrophe has gripped the public imagination in the last few years and it really struck me particularly on a personal level when I was at one of my self-help groups and you introduce yourself just by first name and the affliction that you're struggling with at the time so be it anxiety or depression or bipolar and this young guy turned up and he introduced himself and said that his condition was and I I'd never heard of it before to the point of which I can't remember it now, the exact word. I can't remember the exact word that he used, but it was explained as climate fatalism or anxiety about the end of the world. And that really struck me. You can hear it on the news and the publicity and the global leaders talking about it when you hear it in a self-help group from a, as an individual suffering from this condition and apparently it's not an uncommon condition for young people now for teenagers and people in their 20s to have this sense of fatalism about the future of the planet and the future of life itself that really struck me and kind of alarmed me really to hear that and i suppose it's what filters down from all of this discussion about the climate and climate change and everything else this is what's filtering down to real human beings and is that a positive thing or a negative thing kind of reminds me really of the c19 crisis when there was so much fear and negativity and hysteria spread around that it's left a really deep imprint of anxiety and hysteria amongst people i think and so with the climate chaos that i suppose the objective is to wake people up and to force them to change but you really wonder if it's best to incentivize people in a positive way rather than with this negative doomsday type scenario and it kind of reminded me I suppose when I was growing up in the 80s if the big thing then was the there was fatalism then and it was about nuclear weapons and you had the cold war between America and USSR which was there at the time and the arms race and you had all these statistics that they had enough nuclear weapons to destroy the world 15 times over and all this kind of statistics were coming out and I as a young kid remembering thinking we could be annihilated one day I really I really was <laughs> taken in by that and maybe it was a possibility I think when the Cold War ended Berlin Wall came down and the, the Red Wall came down across Eastern Europe and the USSR crumbled there was kind of a, a discovery that perhaps the USSR wasn't quite as strong as was suspected in the West and the risk of nuclear war was probably less than it was suspected but at the time it was certainly very tangible and very very true and so there was a sense of fatalism there that we could all be obliterated someday and all of this could lead to nothing I mean when I just look out at this beautiful scene here of the sea and everything else and the beauty of that and to think that the earth could end someday it is quite alarming to think that all of this could end someday if climate catastrophe does happen that the levels of the sea here could rise to maybe where i am sitting now and due to the melting of the polar ice caps and I suppose the problem with it is people are used to kind of a linear relationship between things if you do put a certain amount of pollution in you get a certain amount of of results and damage but 
and it's kind of a linear double that and you get double the effect but with the climate it's quite a non-linear so if you double it and double it then the effect goes exponentially higher and you get runaway climate change and positive feedback it's on the eve of cop 26 when all the global leaders are coming together is it is there a sense of fatalism in the air or is it optimism and which do we need and which is going to improve our lives and which is do we need to get a sense of perspective back and if it's causing that level of anxiety in young people then is the message coming out the right way or is it coming out in a, an unduly negative way i suppose we're fascinated with negativity and we're fascinated with doom and dystopia and it's always struck me that in literature utopia doesn't really sell it's dystopia that sells far more in literature brave new world and all of those classic novels paint the future as a very dystopian doomsday style scenario and 1984 the classic and it is just shocking to think that maybe someday all of this will end that the internet that i'm uploading this to now could one day wind down across the world and be wiped out and just disappear into thin air and that everybody could die out our species could be extinct that everything here could be silent that would be just the lapping of the waves if there were, if there are waves left and every clue that we existed in the world could vanish and i suppose if you look at science that in some ways that's inevitable i mean everything is a great cycle in life and perhaps we have to resign ourselves that that will happen at some stage whether it's hundreds of thousands of years or maybe a hundred years time and it would a very complex non-linear system that the climate is and our world is it's very difficult to predict when that will happen and that's why some of the modeling that comes out can produce outrageous and very differing results possibly due to chaos theory as well coming in there which says that very small differences in initial conditions can lead to huge changes in a final result in a model as you play it forward on that note join me next time when i come back with a sense of optimism about the future.